Yeah. Previously, we finished up installing our five rib Galvalum tin roof on our budget pole barn build. Now it's time to tackle the siding, and this turned out to be a pretty huge job and took twice as long as I planned, hence this is gonna be a two-part siding install video. My last four boards off this pine right here. Welcome back to our pole barn build. Over the next couple weeks, we're gonna focus on getting this barn dried in. There's a few different options when it comes to siding. I prefer the vintage, original, antique looking barn, so we're gonna do a board and batten with one by 12 rough cut pine. And of course, hang out to the end and I will share the entire cost update on this pole barn. Now let's get started. For our material, I was lucky enough to source this locally. So I actually found a mobile sawmill and they're actually sawing my one by 12s up right now as we speak. So let's go pick up the first load and check out the operation. We're over here on a mobile sawmill yard with uh, Jason from Wood and Tractor Services. I'll put all his contact info below, but he bounces around to different job sites and clears all his lumber out. And when he's done clearing out, he saws it up either for the customer or resells it. Well, I bought a lot of rough cut lumber in my day, and this will be the first time that I've actually seen the trees that were cleared from the property that our lumber comes from. And he sawed my last four boards off this pine right here. So he pretty much just completed the order. So we're gonna go up here and get the last of our order loaded up. If you ever wondered how much siding it takes rough cut siding it takes to do a barn. This will be the entire barn. So you have all the batten strips right there, uh, minus a few. And these are all the one by 12 by 10s. And then these right here are the one by 12 by 16s. So that is a massive stack. Now here's our first load of one by 12s. I'm gonna have to cut all these to length because we got two different size boards. We got 16 foot pieces for the shed roof, the sides of the barn, and then we got 10 foot pieces for the gable ends of the barn. So each end is gonna be cut square and then we'll measure and cut it to the correct length and run these all the way down the side. Now these boards were trees about two weeks ago, so they haven't been sitting out drying very long, which adds a ton of weight to each piece. And luckily for the first side we're gonna install, the wife jumped in to give me a hand. The one by 12 boards are getting nailed into our girts. And now we used a pressure treated two by six at the bottom. And then two feet up from that, we went to a two by four all the way up to our header. Now these wrap the entire structure and tie everything together and they're also used as nailers for your siding. We'll go in way more detail on these in the second episode when we frame out our stall doors. Just one on each side of this thing, okay? Ready? Yeah, no, bang on. With two people installing, it definitely went pretty easy and every other board we did have to notch out for our rafter tail. But with the wife helping, I just held the board up there and had her put a mark on the horizontal and vertical edge of the rafter tail and then we just notched it out. That's good. So the wife jumped in and helped uh, start that one side the other day. So now we're gonna finish it up. I picked up the last load of the rough cut for the siding. So we should be able to get the full lower uh, board and batten done today. I got my buddy James over again to give me a hand. And once we get the sides done, we'll move on to our headers. We'll have to measure those out a little bit to get the right height for the uh, future barn doors. Once we figure that out, then we'll start tackling the, you know, the front and back of it. So let's get started. So once we got in a groove, this process went pretty quick and we are using ring shank nails to hold these boards up to the girts. And here's a quick clip of how we're cutting our notches for our raptor tails. We're just doing two straight cuts and then a plunge cut on the back side that way you can't really see the overcuts and knocking the piece out with a hammer. We just finished out the back section. So now we have one whole side that's done and this is really simple. Now we stacked it on there, nailed them up as you saw. Uh, leveled use a level to check it every third or fourth one make sure we're staying on course then on the end I know I overhung one inch that way on the back of my girt right here on the gable end of the barn when I put my siding on it'll level up flush right here and then we can add trim work right there we'll do a one by three here and stack a one by three on this back side so yeah pretty simple stuff now we're gonna flip to the other side and knock out the other shed roof side and then we'll go to the gables 
So one thing me and James quickly realized is if I had to do this again, I would have the sawmill cut the boards to my exact length I needed because we ended up cutting every single board twice and it ate up a ton of time. I left uh, one or two open spaces on this side of the barn because we will have a doorway right there for some animals to get in and out. So I left it open, we'll rough that in later on. So now we're gonna switch up and start on the front gable end of the barn. Right now we're gonna set our header height. We're using sliding barn doors that go left and right. So we have to split that measurement, get the difference of that, which ours will be about seven and a half feet. We're gonna set our header as high as we possibly can with the door still being able to slide open and not hit this roof right here. So we're gonna get a two by four, throw it level across the front, and then wherever it lays is where our height of our header will be. We cut this two by four six inches longer than our future doors will be. That way we can know exactly where we can stop the door and not hit the roof. And it turned out to be a pretty easy way to set our header height. Now that we have our header height figured out and it's gonna be right at nine and a half feet, we're gonna put up some temporary two by four blocks to lift this two by 12 in place and hold it until we get it secured. And lifting this giant two by 12 in position kind of makes me laugh thinking back to the beginning when I thought I was gonna tackle this entire build by myself. And although it's gonna push the budget over by a couple thousand for our pole barn build, having good friends like Nick and James that come out and give me a hand when needed has been a godsend and totally worth it on this build. Oh, got it bro. So and now that we got the front 2x12 on for our header, we're going to sandwich in some 4x4s. We're going to run these at 45 degrees. They're about 6 feet long, and these are going to act as some vertical knee braces coming from the top of the 6x down to about 5 feet out on our 2x12. And per usual, I'm using the best saw on the construction site, a chainsaw to trim them to length. Now this is the last board we're adding to our header. This is gonna be the exterior fascia board and it is spaced out to the same depth as the batten and trim will sit. And now we're moving to the back side of the barn and pretty much repeating the same process for the back header. And now with both headers slash transitions installed, we can start running our boards on the bottom sides of the gables. So we got all the shed roof siding complete and now we're going to transition up to the top. So we rented a boom lift to help us do that. And I also got Nick back. He had a baby and took a couple weeks off. Congratulations, Nick. And we're going to see how fast we can get this uh, lift up in the air and hopefully get this gable end on right here. So Nick, we got him set up on the saw station and I'm going to be nailing. Let's do it. Oh, oh, oh. Now this boom lift was a huge help, but it did take about an hour to get the positioning of it figured out. Once you have it positioned on the ground, it only articulates kind of in like a radius. So you can't just go straight up and down. You gotta position the base to end up at the same height and position on where you want. 120. Yes, sir. Look at that. Once we got the positioning of the lift figured out, everything went pretty smooth. I just called out the measurements to Nick. He cut them, we put one screw on the board and that hung it perfectly on the rail of the boom lift and lifted it right up in position and I nailed it in with the framing nailer.
We got all the boards on the gable ends and now we're gonna trim this thing out. We just ran one side right here. We're running this all the way to the top and all the way down on our raptor tail. And we did have to add a, um, a raptor tail fascia board as well. We used some one by 12 right there. You can see that pressure treated one. That will space siding out enough to where all the trim and the batten strips sit flush. So we still have to do this other side and then we'll be able to start running our flying rafter spacers to run this top arched fascia board. What we're gonna do is put a little cribbing or a little block under here, attach this to this side. That way we'll have a lot more surface area to attach our one by six fascia and then we can pull it in with some ledger lock screws and get that arch on it. So now we'll get our one by sixes and we'll attach them to the bottom and then attach them to the top up here. And then we'll use some ledger bolts to see if we can suck this radius in. Right here, you can see I added a little block to the extra blocks that we have screwed into our flying purlins. This allowed me to get the clamp in position and clamp the one by six in place. And I used the clamp while drawing in the ledger screw. That way I didn't strip out the hole. So the arch fascia is on the front. We got all the boards on as well. And Nick is already starting on some of the, the trim pieces. And then we're gonna start throwing the batten strips up now. Start in the very center, work our way out, and then this will be done. So the last thing left to do is to cut off this metal. It might be a little tricky because we have to cut through uh, one rib on here. So hopefully it'll look pretty decent. Um, I'm gonna cut it flush with this fascia and then I got some uh, gable trim to cover this up. It might be a little tough is to get the arch in the gable trim. So we might have to put some re relief cuts in that, but I'm gonna trim this roof first and then we'll get that trim up here and just see what we can do with it. That is very difficult to run along this wood piece. So if you didn't have a radius or a arch gable, then it would be a lot easier just you know, straight cutting that metal with that shear. But you know, we got this radius on here, so it turned out a little bit tricky. Got this trimmed all the way up to the peak. We're gonna hit the other side and then I'm leaving this ridge cap wild for now. Or just overhanging freely. I'll see if I can get this trim to make this arch as well. And then we'll tie in the ridge cap. All right guys, so I tried to get the box rake to fit or bend on this arch gable and it just was not happening. Without it looking like Edward Scissor hands, took a whack at it and cut it all up. So if you guys got any suggestions on what I can use to get this arched gable um, trimmed out, please let me know. And here's the ridge cap after we trimmed it up and got it nice and neat and tucked away. We got about two weeks of work in this siding job so far and we have about 80% of it left. We have most of the batten still left to put on, a lot of the trim work on the corners, and then we still have our monitor section to fill in but we do have some custom vintage windows we're going to put up there and put new custom frames up and then we'll get the siding done up top so now let's break down the cost on this pole barn build so far so the running total so far was right at 11,200 that was after last episode when we put the roof on right now we're sitting right at $14,235 our siding total cost was $2,295 for all the 1x12 and 1x3 material the girts was about $240 that 
that was with some extra nails and some hardware we needed to install it. And the labor that we paid was right at $500. So yeah, our grand total is right at $14,235 so far for this pole barn build. Now remember the extra labor that I paid for wasn't included in the original budget. So if I take that out, which is right around $2,500, we'll be pretty close to our original $10,000 budget. And as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next episode as we finish out this siding job on our budget pole barn build.